Okay, everybody, before we get this video started, I just wanted to let everybody know that after our premiere now and then following Jewel Small Gardening and Boon Child, you can catch us on the live stream with the Lala Farm, one of our favorite channels. Hey, everybody, Michael here again. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth about chicken genetics and color. Uh, I just got done moving the chicken tractor. We have some really nasty weather, you guys can tell. And uh, just moved the chicken tractor over. We move it one length uh, about every two days. Look at all that free fertilization. Now that's how you fertilize the garden. When it comes to chickens and DNA, um, the more you understand the letters and symbols and all that other stuff in the DNA profile, the easier it's going to be for you to understand uh, chickens when it comes to breeding and uh, passing on colors. The more you'll be able to do it on your own. Uh, but you have to understand the DNA profile of chickens uh, before you can go much further when it comes to breeding other than just guessing on putting two colors together. And it just don't really work. Say for instance, uh, if you take two blue chickens and put them together, blue is not going to bleed true. It just ain't going to do it. I say bleed over because those two colors are not going to go to the next generation. They will, but you're going to get a lot of other stuff with it because it just won't breed true. There's going to get a bunch of other colors in there with it. So, therefore, you have to understand the DNA profiles in order to get a much better result. Just like you've seen uh, earlier in the video with me moving the chicken tractor, I'm going to be doing various projects around the homestead while I make this video. I won't be talking about those projects in detail. Uh, I just have to divide my time while I make this video and try to get some stuff done even though it's raining. At the first of the video I said we're going to be talking about color genetics. Uh, but before we get in depth about that, uh, you first need to understand about the sex genetics. Uh, so we're going to be talking about chromosomes and DNA there just for a brief second. Because I don't want you guys to think just because you know about the chromosomes and DNA of humans that you're pretty much don't need to watch this video because it's pretty much going to be the same. We were all taught that we do know females um, have the X chromosome and the males have the XY chromosome. I mean the female has two X's in the chromosome profile and the male has an XY. So uh, when these two, male and female, in humans mate, of course, uh, the female can only pass on the one chromosome. If the offspring is a male, then we know that the male got the one X chromosome from the mom and the Y chromosome from the dad, therefore being a male. However, the male can also pass on the X chromosome, which matches the X chromosome in the female mate, resulting in the offspring being a double X, which is the female. However, it is completely opposite in the chickens. It's the female that determines the sex of the two. I'm out here working. I'll be spitting off most of this information at the top of my head. And then when I'm done today, I'll go in tonight and add pictures, as many pictures and diagrams as I can to help you understand a little bit more of what we're going to be talking about. So now I'm going to clear up a little confusion about chromosomes. Humans have 23 sets of chromosomes, um, 22 normal, which are called autosomes, and one pair of sex chromosomes. Um, it's also different in chickens. Um, chickens have uh, 39 sets of chromosomes, and that would be 38 regular autosomes, and one regular pair of sex chromosomes. Now here's where it gets tricky. In the sex chromosomes of chickens, there are also other genes that are carried. The genes that are carried on the sex chromosomes are called sex genes. That's how we get sex-linked chickens, and they're really popular. If you guys don't know what sex-linked chickens are, uh, you can automatically determine the sex of the baby chick as soon as it's born just by feather color, 100%. So that's what a sex link is. Okay, so let's get back to the male and female chicken. In the chicken world, uh, chickens will show up, the male will have um, Z and Z chromosomes, and the female will have the ZW chromosome, so it's different. Uh, the female will determine the sex, so if the female chicken just so happens to pass on 
um, her Z chromosome, the rooster only has two Z chromosomes, so obviously you're going to get a boy. But if she decides to pass on the W chromosome, then you're going to get a female chick. Alright y'all, for now I'm using the barn as a tripod. While Pop up the Coach and Bantam. Uh, we have temporary winter tops here and I'm uh, putting a better enclosure in and making it a little more windproof for our Bantams that have feather feet. So now while we're on determining sex as far as chromosomes go uh, and sex in general when it comes to chicks, I wanted to clear up something that we was talking about in a live one time and um, a lot of people don't know but uh, sex is not determined uh, by temperature when you're incubating eggs. There's a lot of people that believe um, through some information of hatcheries that um, you can get a certain temperature in your incubator uh, and that will change the sex of the egg and only females will hatch. That is absolutely false information. Uh, it don't happen. I don't care who you are. It don't happen. Once a male and female decides the sex, even before it goes into the shell, um, you can't change it. There's nothing you can do to change the sex once it's determined by the mother and the father. However, there is truth to taking your eggs and putting them in an incubator and selecting a certain temperature where only the females will hatch. The rest of the eggs are discarded. Um, that is true and it is proven fact. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more. I just wanted to clear up the fact of sex being determined by temperature inside of an egg is absolutely false. Uh, and that information does not need to be spread around. Uh, and that's how we're going to touch on that for now. So for some of you that's want to know if we're going to do a demonstration on that particular type of incubating. Um, I have did it before working with other people. I know it does work. It's not something that we use here on our homestead because roosters is just as important as hens are. Uh, and a lot of people here in North Carolina that buy chicks from us know that because we don't sell our roos. We like to keep our bloodline true right here on our yard. Um, so pretty much all you get from us is hens unless you're special or you're part of our breeding program for a holding brood. So I'm not sure if we're going to be doing an actual demonstration, but I may do a video on how it's done and um, how these some of these hatcheries utilize that uh, to also help turnover of just straight pullets. So maybe in the future we'll see. So chickens, here's where it gets really confusing. Um, no matter what chicken that you're looking at, uh, every breed and color is going to have different letters and symbols as far as big capitalized or small letters and things of that nature and they're all going to be a bunch of different letters uh, versus just an X and a Y for male and female it's going to be R's and B's and BL's and it's going to be all kind of uh, different things so once you hit that part a lot of people just start getting confused and uh, they get lost and that's what this video is for is to try to explain it to you a little bit better so you can follow along and figure some of this out for yourself and uh, be able to dial in on perfect situations as far as color, penciling, striping, and lacing when it comes to your chickens and color. Uh, you'll be able to dial it in uh, just like spelling your name. Important to understand in chickens, there is uh, dominant genes, there's recessive genes, and there's co-dominant genes. Now the dominant genes will be expressed by capital letters and the recess gene is the ones that are represented by the smaller letters. Uh, the dominant or the small letter and the big letter only represents um, the big letter is the dominant gene and it's usually the one that will show its face if it's mixed with a recessive gene. However, if it is mixed with another dominant gene of a different color, that would be considered co-dominant genes talking about co-dominant genes uh, which means both chickens will have the big letter um, in their profile that means both both of them will have an effect so you'll get a mixture of both um, and any other time the big letter is always dominant and the small ones recessive by putting two dominant genes together that are different colors like a dominant white or I mean a dominant splash or a dominant black putting them together they're going to mix and then you're going to get a whole different makeup a mixture of the two explain a little more on that let's say we have a black chicken um, any black chicken let's say a Jersey Giant black chicken um, those chickens are made up in profile of a small BL and a small BL um, 
meaning that both of those recessed genes was bred together of black to make that black chicken. So let's take that chicken that was represented by the two small BLs and breed it with the opposite end of the spectrum. The alternative for the small BL obviously is the capitalized BL, which is the opposite end of the color, which would be white with uh, some black or gray specks in there. Let's call it splash. So if you take your black, remember the little BL is still dominant and the big BL from the splash chicken is dominant. So when we put those two chickens together, we're going to get a mixture. This is how we can guarantee ourselves 100% blue chickens every time because splash will always dilute black and turn into blue. Now, let's get one more thing clear when it comes to blue and lavender. Lavender is not represent a representation or dilution of black, blue, or splash. Lavender is its own color. It is a dominant gene and it'll breed true, but it is it has nothing to do with black, white, or blue. Talk about our blue chicken since we've already imaginarily created blue chickens by crossing the splash and the black chickens together, the two dominant genes. That chicken's profile will be made up of a big B, big L, slash little B, little L. It'll have the makeup of both parents. Therefore, when you breed those two chickens together, each having one of each, then you're going to get a selection of all the colors. You will get blue, but you're going to get a selection of every other color from those parents. And um, whatever they can throw, you're going to get, which is usually going to be blue, black, and splash. Let's take splash chickens, for example. Um, splash chickens on the profile and their makeup is represented by capitalized BL, BL, uh, all across the board, it's all big letters. So when you put two splash chickens together, they're always gonna breed true uh, because you're gonna get a mixture of the two. However, they're both dominant genes and they're both the same color, just like black chickens. They're a dominant gene, even though they're represented by the smaller letters, they're always gonna breed true every time. So now I'm gonna show you one more example of codominant genes, which is something I rarely mess with, but I did use um, that code for our very own Onyx Fire breed chicken. So basically, I'm going to break down the DNA profile um, and what we used to make this breed. So now, how we started this breed was we crossed with a gold or red dominant gene with our recessive black, which black is recessive, but it will still breed true. Uh, especially in this case and um, we bred those two together um, and they were like codominant genes and uh, when you do black in that color it's not a dilution it's always going to be a mixture of the two in so many different ways it can be half and half it can be splotched all over and again in case you guys um, forgot we did choose two chickens that did have the recessive single cone gene and not only in chromosomes with chickens are you going to be able to pull out your penciling and all your other colors and dial it in, but they also represent types of different combs on chickens. Now, let's talk about the cones. Um, let's say we have a single cone, so uh, the single cone is recessive and it's represented by a little r, and a rose cone is represented by a bigger letter. So, when you put those two together, you're always, most of the time, going to get a rose cone. The only time the recessive single cone will show up is when you mix it with another single cone. We hope this helped. We hope you guys had fun watching this video. We hope you learned something. Uh, we also want to let you know that I'm constructing another trivia game. This one's going to be called Chicken Trivia. We're going to be planning on our Saturday night live streams. Uh, you can come and play. Learn a lot of things about chickens uh, as far as hatching and color. Not a lot of crazy confusion, but just a lot of fun facts and a lot of things that you didn't know about chickens. And uh, win some prizes and have some fun. So we'll see you then. And uh, again, thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the future.